Pete used to say that a place isn't everything. People can make a home out of a cardboard box if you give them half a chance. He didn't understand why I clung to Imber as if it were a lost soul. But perhaps if he were here with me now, standing in a dip of the church doorstep, I would see something give way in that flint face of his. The earth has run its fingers all over the church. Clots of moss bloom in green seas on the roof. Ivy has prized open windows and doors and clawed at the fissures in the stonework. Nesting birds leap up at the smallest of movements, mistaking every sound for a bullet. As I step into the porch, they splash through the glassless windows and ghosts through the air above the nave. So immersed is the stone in creepers and lichen that it is as if the church is nature's own creation, born from the ground like a new breed of tree. The sea change is about an evacuated ghost town which is taken by the military in 1943 um, as part of their training for D-Day and they promise the villagers that they'll give the village back after the war but instead they hold on to it and completely destroy it. Um, and the villagers were so convinced that they were going back that they left cans of tin pears in their larders. Um, so the, the shock of that evacuation leaves a permanent mark on their lives. And my story focuses on the character of Violet, who, because of this um, very quick evacuation, develops a heightened sense of home and finds she's unable to move on from that landscape and that place. Um, Imba is uh, a real village, it still exists today, it's still marked on the map even though no one lives there and actually in 2011 I had the privilege of going and watching the army train there. Um, they still use the village for training for Afghanistan today. Um, it's very much still a kind of working place even though it's not used as a village today. Well I suppose the, the genesis of the novel came from the moment when I was standing in um, the old schoolhouse, it's a, pretty much just a shell now, and um, I was waiting for the army to ambush the village. They were hidden all over the uh, plain surrounding the village. It was about 5 a.m. in the morning, um, absolutely freezing, and um, uh, rifles started to fire and smoke grenades were thrown, and suddenly this very peaceful, quaint English village was transformed into a battleground, and I started to um, think about what would this feel like if this was your home and you're watching it being used in this way. Um, would you think that your sacrifice was worthwhile or would you have clung on a bit more tightly to it? So 30 years after the evacuation of Imber, um, Violet's daughter Alice sets off on the hippie trail with her boyfriend James. Um, she drives all the way from Istanbul to India across um, Iran, Pakistan and um, Afghanistan and down to the southernmost tip of India where she finds herself embroiled in the aftermath of a tsunami. Um, the hippie trail was a um, phenomenon that 20-somethings in the 70s used to take part in um, where it was basically where seeing the world on a shoestring um, avoiding commercial flights and um, basically driving over the Middle East to reach India. I think both my narratives focus on the relationship between people and places and they're very much um, drawn together by uh, the fact that they're two ruined places and um, Imber is um, very much frozen in time. It's this um, uh, landscape which is decaying very slowly and yet is against the odds surviving um, against all these forces of war and time and nature. Um, the tsunami landscape on the other hand is obliterated almost overnight um, and is full of these fra fragmented objects. Um, and I think I was just fascinated by the relationship between war and natural disaster, the similarities between the two, and also um, the idea that um, war and natural disaster can affect our sense of home very powerfully. <laughs>